In this video, we're going to continue our work with congruent triangle proofs. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can use special triangles to help us prove congruent triangles. So we have two theorems to consider here. One of them says when two sides in the same triangle are congruent, the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. So what that looks like is we have a triangle, and if we have two sides that are congruent, it's saying that the angles opposite those sides also have to be congruent. So what that means is the angles across from these two congruent sides, so this angle and this angle, also have to be congruent. And that's the reason why this is true is because we have, if two, if two sides are equal in a triangle, well then the triangle is isosceles, which then means that the base angles are also equal. So instead of saying all of that, the three steps with the two equal sides, the isosceles triangle, and the angles opposite those, we can use this theorem to help us jump right into it. One caution, though, is that you have to be dealing with the same triangle. So if you have two congruent sides and two triangles, that does not mean that the angles opposite those are congruent. So you have to be working with the same triangle. So on um, congruent sides or congruent angles must be in the same triangle. And then if we look at this next theorem, it's basically saying that the converse of this is true, meaning if now we're talking about a triangle with two congruent base angles, well, we can go across from those and say that the sides have to be congruent. We're dealing with the, um, the same triangle, so you have to have a situation where the angles and the sides belong to the same triangle. So let's just kind of box that in and show that. So, and the reason why this works again too is because if you have two congruent base angles, well then the triangle's isosceles, which then means that the sides also have to be congruent. So if we look at, oh, so here's our caution right here. Um, if we look at these examples, the first set here, we're not going to actually write a proof for it. We're just looking at how can we identify the other pairs of congruent angles or the pairs of congruent sides. So if we look at GA, so GA is congruent to GB. So using this isosceles triangle theorem, if these two sides are congruent, well then the angles opposite those also have to be congruent. So that means, I'm going to put 3 and 4 in here, and I'm going to say, well that means that angle 3 has to be congruent to angle 4. So the next thing here, so that's using that idea when two sides in a triangle in the same triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. If we look at this one, it's saying TPS, so TPS and TRQ for this entire angle. So again, look at the big triangle here. It's easy to not look at the big triangles because you're going to be so focused on proving the, the two triangles you're trying to prove are congruent, but always keep an eye out for them. It's something that you look for in the diagram. So now I have these two congruent angles. So if you look at the sides opposite those, well, the sides opposite those have to be congruent. So what that means, so it's actually this whole side is congruent to this whole side. So what that means is RQ would have to be congruent to PQ. And then the last example is actually doing the proof. So using those theorems above to do a proof. So we look at what they give us here. We have angle CDE is congruent to angle CED. So right away I'm thinking I see this triangle right here. So I'm thinking if those angles are congruent, well then the sides opposite those have to also be congruent. And then looking at the other pieces of information here, they're telling me AD and BE are congruent. And we're trying to prove ACD, so ACD is congruent to BCE. 
So when I look at this, I'm thinking, okay, well, these angles are parts. So I have to prove that the triangles are congruent first. So that means I have to use CPCTC. That's what this is indicating. Um, but first, I have to prove the triangles that those belong to are congruent. So basically, this triangle and this triangle over here, because those are the triangles that those angles belong to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start writing this up. I'm going to write start it over here. So I have angle CDE is congruent to angle CED. So that's given. And then I have AD and BE are congruent. That's given. So right away, I looked at that isosceles triangle there, and I thought, okay, well, I can say that these two sides are congruent. So from this given here, I can conclude that CD is congruent to CE. And that's the new theorem. So um, if we have two congruent side or two congruent angles in this case, so two congruent angles in the same triangle imply sides opposite, those angles are congruent. Something worded like that. So that's basically the theorem at the top of the page. So that's how I got CD is congruent to CE. Remember, the other option is you say that you have an isosceles triangle, then you say that the two sides are congruent because you have an isosceles triangle. This is just kind of eliminating that step where you state the isosceles triangle. So there's that. So I have my two congruent sides. So then I also have these sides already. And then the other thing is, if I look at the two purple triangles, I don't have enough information right now to prove that they're congruent because I only have two things and I need a third. But right away, when I look at this picture, the purple triangles, I see these angles, so I'm just going to call them one and two, that are touching angles three and four, and one and two are congruent. And when I look at these, I see supplementary angles. So that's going to allow me to use that supplements theorem. So what I'm going to go ahead and say is angle one is supplementary to angle three, angle two is supplementary to angle four, and this is because two angles that form a line are supplementary. And then really these two angles right here, this is the same thing as saying angle one is congruent to angle two. I just didn't use the three letters. But since I have this, that's going to make angle three and four congruent. So now what I can do is I can take these two pieces and say angle three is congruent to angle four. That's that congruent supplements theorem. And then I can go ahead and mark these now. And then by side, angle, side, my two triangles are congruent. So now I can look at labeling this. So side, angle, side. Notice I used that one given twice. I used it for the two congruent sides, and I used it for the supplements theorem, which is totally fine. You can use a given more than once. So I have my um, CD and CE are one set of sides. My angles that I care about are 3 and 4. Those are the included angles. And then I have on this other set of sides that was given to me. So now I have enough information using those blue pieces. So those three pieces of information to say that the triangles are congruent. So triangle A, D, C is congruent to triangle B, E, C. That's by side, angle, side. And then from there, well, if the triangles are congruent, that forces those other angles to be congruent. So A, C, D. So angle A, C, D is congruent to angle B, C, E. 
and that's by CPCTC. Or you could say uh, congruent triangles have congruent corresponding parts, something along those lines. So that's the idea here with this. It's just adding another um, like mini proof almost, or it's adding another statement and reason that you can use, which is actually a shortcut. So instead of doing those isosceles triangles, this is the shortcut. You're using isosceles triangles um, if you wanted to prove this theorem, but this is basically just its own theorem that kind of el uh, eliminates us having to state the isosceles triangles. And then from there on, it's just combining everything else that you've already seen. So that's it. So go ahead and try your check your understanding page.